Portland Jazz Composers Ensemble and Montevilla Jazz have teamed up for this really, really cool project. They've commissioned three composers to write new music inspired by Mount Tabor Park. I'm James Powers. I'm a local Portland trombonist, uh, sometime guitarist, sometime bassist recently, sometime vocalist, sometime slide whistle player. My dad is a, is a trombonist, so I sort of picked up the trombone through osmosis from him, essentially. And I've always, I've always had an appreciation for, for nature and the outdoors. It was really easy for me to appreciate the idea of, of writing a piece of music in dedication to the park or, or about the park or for the park. It's a really important place, uh, I think, in Portland, honestly. over that, I don't know. Maybe let's focus on the B section. When I was invited to participate in Views of an Urban Volcano, I was frankly surprised. I figured there were <laughs> much more competent writer arrangers in the Portland area. Well, there are. Frankly, there are much more competent writer arrangers in the Portland area uh, because I know a lot of them. How's that sound? I like to compose like bass lines and melodies first, generally. I guess really my process with writing something connected to a figure is, or, or a historical event or, or any of those types of things, is really the same process that I use for, for most of my writing for anything else, which is just sort of try to put myself in a position to experience some sort of thing. I mean, you know, when you're on the top of, of Mount Tabor Park you can, and you're listening, you can hear like cars honking their horns and like see the like schools over there and like over there you can see all these houses and businesses. And par I guess part of what I'm trying to do is write things that might remind someone of like those aspects of, of the artificial. Of, of society and also remind one of those aspects of, of nature and seeing where I can bring them together. My name is Kirsten Valness, and I'm a composer, pianist, and educator from Portland, Oregon. I started as a musician, as a four-year-old. I wanted to take piano lessons. So is this how you wrote your composition? When I was four, yes. <laughs> Three or four. <laughs> this thing is amazing. I ended up taking an orchestration class with Judith Lang Zaymont at the University of Minnesota. I fell in love with composition and this, you know, being able to hear an orchestra play back music I had dreamt up was pretty magical. So I was hooked from then on and was a composer. I'm really interested in how communities and places have a story within them and how we can share that and how having those conversations can create a more, you know, loving community among us, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm almost done with this piece and I'm putting the finishing touches on it. A lot of copy and paste of chord progressions and things. And I know for a fact that beyond this, it's going to change and become something even more wonderful. Off the page. So the first movement focuses on the history of the place and the natural space. The second movement focuses on the history of the people. At the Historical Society event, the panel discussion, I was very interested in what Dr. Marie Rose Wong had to say about the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. There were so many Chinese woodcutters on Mount Tabor who were working essentially as cheap labor, but also at some point were no longer wanted. Asked the ferry captain, will you take these folks across the river to Portland, where they set up Chinatown, of course. So I'm really trying to draw connections between the way we build our communities, how we treat one another as human beings, and how we can learn from the history of Mount Tabor, both societally and naturally, to be able to build a natural environment that's very welcoming to everyone in town. How do we build a society that is helpful and allows everyone to thrive. I 
I'm Cyrus Nabipour. I started composing, I guess in high school. It's, it's funny, there's actually a song that I still play with my quintet called The Spectre that I wrote, I think 2013. I refer to that song as the first decent song I ever wrote. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking these really chaotic, illegible, handwritten notes of mine and I'm transferring them to uh, the notation software to make it look really nice and readable for the musicians who are going to be playing it because if I handed them this, it would be not a good time. <laughs> Sometimes I do compose on the trumpet, like if, if a melody line really comes to me while I'm playing the horn, you know, I'll run with that. Um, but I really like composing on the piano. I'm not an amazing piano player by any stretch, but you know, I can, I can play chords in the left hand and the melody in the right. You know, piano is just to me is like the universal instrument and it's kind of like the composer's instrument to me. I, that or guitar, but I you know, don't really have the mind for guitar um, or the fingers. Mount Tabor has played some sort of role in my life through all of my life stages, you know, as a kid, as a teenager, as an adult. I knew going in that I had a strong personal connection to it and could speak musically with some amount of legitimacy. And then since then, you know, through these educational um, events that we've had, have learned a ton about the history that I didn't know about before. Probably the, the factoid that stood out to me the most and has stuck with me at the panelist event at the Oregon Historical Society this last spring, it was mentioned that Mount Tabor is tall enough that way, way, way back during the Great Missoula floods, the, the top still poked out above the water level. So um, Mount Tabor functioned as one of the islands, you know, along with like Mount Hood and other things in the area. I just thought that that's super cool. I think that Mount Tabor is a place where people can really find that perspective and a little bit of solitude or quietude where, um, you know, the everyday life can disappear for a minute. Maybe people who haven't thought to experience or enjoy the park in this way or that would be inspired to, you know, try after hearing the music. Although I'm certainly not trying to like change anyone's mind or life with the music. I'm, you know, really mostly just trying to write music that's fun to listen to. I would hope that that people come away with a, with a sense that, y you know, we have to work together in order to keep the things that are important to us, like, uh, like, like the park, like the aspects of, of, of nature in town. But there's a danger in general that, that we're not going to have all of these things forever if we don't take more care of them. I hope that people, <laughs> I don't know, care about, I hope that people hear this and like notice that I'm at least trying to like point in that direction at the very least. Mm -hmm.